Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be, as you can read by the title, doing a clutch job in this Dodge Ram. I don't know exactly what year it is, but this will be applicable, applicable from about 03 to 09 Dodges. Um, they could have two different style manual transmissions, either the, or three I guess, they could have the NV4500, NV5600, and the G56 in the following years. Um, some of the later model trucks will be very similar in how you do this, but this is going to be basically the gist of it, doing a clutch job. Um, and like pretty much every year from 94 to uh, 2018 Dodge Rams, if you have to do a clutch, it'll be a pretty similar job as far as how everything is laid out. But to start with guys, we have the truck pulled in here today and we're going to be installing a South Bend dual disc clutch. Um, I believe that's a 3250. We'll see when we open it up. Customer provided that. We have the 3250 organic ceramic, uh, like one side of the plate's organic, the other side ceramic. And to start with, before we can even lift the thing up in the air, what we want to do is uh, take the interior apart. All right, guys, to start with, three eight millimeter bolts. There's one here, underneath, four drive shift boot, and then there's one up front there. You remove those, we'll slide this panel back, and we'll be able to unthread the shifter get this whole thing pulled off of here. Okay, once that is out of the way, you're gonna to wanna to pull the top shift boot out. It's a eight millimeter, there's several. at this point we're going to pull the top shifter off so we're going to first verify that the transmission is in neutral now that's in neutral we'll pull the shift tower off these are three eighths yeah these are everything else is metric but the transmission bolts are standard three eighths tire will just pull straight up out of there can be a little stuck because the silicone will kind of get stuck set this guy down and then we're going to stuff a rag inside of the top of the trans that way nothing falls down in there all right guys once we get to this point we are okay to move underneath the truck and start working down there. We're gonna start by removing the rear drive shaft. It's a 15 mil. It's four bolts total. There's two 15 mil bolts. Once those bolts are removed, you can take the drive shaft out. Slip the yoke on the transfer case. We'll set it out of the way for now. We're gonna remove the skid plate now. Take this cross member here in the middle out. All right guys, now we're going to unhook the front drive shaft from the transfer case. There's four 16 millimeter bolts. Make sure the transfer case is in neutral so that way you can rotate it and we will get these removed. Now that the front drive shaft is dis disconnected, we're going to remove the transfer case. There is six 14 millimeter bolts right here that go around the uh, part of the transfer case where it bolts to the transmission. So we will go ahead and get those removed. There's also a shift linkage right there and a vacuum or a vent tube and also a four wheel drive indicator sensor. So we need to unplug the sensor, the vent, the shift linkage, 
in those six bolts and then we will remove the transfer case. I'm gonna go ahead and interrupt the video to talk about today's video sponsor and that is Top Don. Top Don is a company that manufactures a various amount of different products uh, coming from thermal imaging cameras that will go into your smartphone to just regular thermal imaging cameras, uh, diagnostic equipment, so scanners, OBD2 scanners, so we can get on there when we're doing repairs on vehicles, uh, be able to diagnose them, uh, check, check engine lights, uh, clear check engine lights, perform other tests as needed with those tools. They also offer a pretty wide range of battery chargers, battery testers, and so what I'm gonna do guys, I'm gonna leave the link in the description to Top Don. It's gonna be the first link you guys are gonna see in the description below. Be sure to head over to their website, show them guys some love, uh, check out the products, see what they have to offer. Um, we have been using, like I said, a couple different products so far from Top Don, and we are expecting to see some more here soon. And uh, I can't wait to do some reviews for you guys and show you what these tools will do. They are affordable, but they're really high quality, and that's really hard to find because it seems like there's no middle of the road for uh, tools, especially diagnostic tools. It either seems like you're getting something really, really cheap or something extremely expensive. You guys, we're able to tap into a market where the products are good quality and we use them day to day, but at the same time, they're affordable and anyone that's doing DIY stuff at home could benefit from these tools. So like I said, guys, the description is below. Check it out and uh, be sure to follow them on all of their social media platforms. Now, guys, we will remove the transfer case out of the truck. Just kind of slide it back off of the trans, and then we will lower this guy down. All right, guys, now that the transfer case is removed, we're going to support the transmission and remove the transmission mount and the cross member. So there's a couple bolts to go upward through there. Like I said, we're going to get the trans supported first, though. Two 15 mils. cross member bolts it's a 20 21 on the nut side on the bolt side it's 18 that out of the way for now. Reverse connector right there on the side. Unplug the hydraulics or basically take them loose. It's two 13s. Full studs coming out on the bottom but that's okay. It's not gonna hurt anything. Just make sure they go back the same orientation. All right guys, this is the setup we will use to remove the bell housing bolts. This is a snap-on. Does it have a part number? Oh no, Cornwell. it's a Cornwell. It's a Cornwell EA3236B. And this is basically half inch on this side and it's three eighths on this side. And then we have a 14 mil swivel socket. So I'm gonna set the camera down for you guys. We're gonna do it all together in one motion. I'm gonna pull these bolts out, slide the transmission back and lower this guy down. Alright guys, now that the transmission is removed, eight 10 millimeter bolts all the way around the pressure plate that hold the pressure plate and the friction disc to the flywheel. We've already got most of them removed. Bailey's going to remove the last two right now and drop this clutch down. Last one. Let's see what's going to look at that guy. Let's get it out here and check it out. She's, She's worn out. Now we will remove the flywheel. There's eight 18 millimeter bolts. We're gonna go ahead and get this removed. Now is going to 
be a good time to remove the rear main seal. I'll show that very briefly. Um, anytime you do a clutch job or remove an automatic transmission, it is always a good idea to do a rear main seal. Even if it's not leaking, um, unless it's literally brand new, you should go ahead and remove it and replace it. You can see this one is leaking right here at the bottom. It's pretty damp. So the easiest way to install these, um, a lot of people will remove the engine adapter plate. It's not necessary. The gasket where the uh, uh, the gasket where the seal um, basically drives into this this little ring around around here bolts to the engine behind this plate. But you don't have to remove the engine adapter plate to change that. Two small holes on each side of the seal very carefully without scratching the crank surface. And then we'll use a slide hammer and two self-tapper bolts that will thread into those holes and we will remove the seal. A pair of vice grips that are welded to a slide hammer and I have two self-tappers inside of the rear main seal. So what I'm gonna do is grab onto these self-tappers and go back and forth with them. Got that side almost out, we'll jump over to this side. like that the old one is removed we're gonna pitch this and I'll show you guys how to install our new ones pretty simple we're going to use the rear main seal in this plastic sleeve to start with you can see it's kind of bigger on the outside I will slide over the crank like this and get flush on it so we're gonna push all the way until it starts to get stiff You guys can see it's kind of still but bulging out on that side a little bit. We're just going to tap it evenly all the way around. You want to go in even is the main thing. It's going to be hard to be absolutely perfect, but you just don't want to basically have it sticking way out on one side, not in the, hardly on the other. So that's pretty good right there. Seal started correctly. guys got the dog here wanting to want to check out what's going on but basically we have our clutch the clutch comes pre-assembled in the box so this is a dual disc clutch it's gonna have uh, two discs in it we'll show you guys how that goes together in a second we have a new clutch fork a pilot release a new pilot bearing in the uh, flywheel and then a new clutch release bearing as well so that guy's brand new and like I said it comes with a uh, new pivot point so we have any flywheel bolts, um, a couple stickers, and then this clutch kit also came with new hydraulics. We removed all the bolts out of the pressure plate. We're gonna flip it over, set it over here. What I like to do is just put everything, take it apart um, as you uh, as you take it apart, just kind of leave it how it goes back together. So we'll flip this, and they're labeled, but I still just like to be careful and keep everything exactly how these come apart. In the middle, you have the intermediate plate it has these little rubber isolators on it some clutches have these it helps quiet up the clutch just be sure not to lose those we have the last plate here so that being said we are going to break clean this off it does have some cardboard and stuff in it from shipping so we'll get this cleaned up it has a new pilot bearing installed in it already then we will install Comes with new flywheel bolts. We're gonna use blue Loctite on these guys. Got the first disc up there. Gonna take the intermediate plate. Gonna install the last disc with the clutch alignment tool, verify that it goes all the way into the pilot bearing on the flywheel. Is going to install the pressure plate, line it up with the red paint. Install the rest of the bolts, guys, and these are going to torque evenly to 45 foot pounds.
shot back all of this debris out of the bell housing. Really remove the pivot ball, or take the washer out and reinstall it in the transmission. We will install the clutch fork. Where's that? It's right there. Has a little retainer that will hold it in place. Guys, we are now ready to reinstall the trans. This is what you should look like. Verify the release bearing is installed correctly. Slides on the fork. Pivot ball has the retainer on it. Light layer of grease on the end of the input shaft. All right, guys, we're getting ready to install the transmission back in the truck. I'm gonna roll it up here and get her stabbed in there. Installing transmission bolts, bell housing, eight of them all the way around. Always a good idea, guys, go back through by hand and check your bell housing bolts. All right, guys, we're installing the crossbow back in the truck now while the trans is still jacked up to the tie. This can be a little bit of a trick to get installed, but a lot better than the second thing for sure. This one's not in the best shape, but it's not terrible. It's just kind of uh, coming apart right here, but I think it's bad enough that we need to, to stop what we're doing and replace it. It should be okay. We're gonna set that guy down. Just like that. Reinstall 14 mil nuts to go on the transfer case. Up the front drive shaft bolts. And then get those reinstalled. Next step would be to plug in the electrical connections on the transmission, reverse light, four drive on the transfer case, four drive linkage on the transfer case. And now I will reinstall the vacuum line and route it with the wiring harness, or not the vacuum, I'm sorry, but the vent line for the transfer case that goes way up there. So, it's right here on the ground. I'm gonna go ahead and get that rerouted, and then we will start installing our rear drive shaft. All right, now we're gonna reinstall the rear drive shaft. Do the carrier bearing bracket first. Bolt that guy up there, and uh, bolt her back to the rear end. We go guys rear drive shaft bolts slight dab of blue loctite on these guys Guys, we're gonna reinstall the cross members and skid plates.
All right guys, at this point we're gonna move on to the hydraulics part of this. The dual disc clutch came with upgraded hydraulics, so we need to get these sw swapped out. The master cylinder goes to the firewall right there. The bolts are gonna be under the driver's footwell compartment, or above the driver's footwell compartment. So we will uh, start with removing those two bolts on the back side, and there's also a clutch safety switch, which Bailey is gonna be removing. Here, can you get a shot of that up in there? Yeah. So we're gonna remove those bolts and uh, pull that guy out the front. Okay, now you guys can see the master clutch master cylinder installed. Um, it, it comes with two little tabs if you want. You can drill a hole in the cowl to mount it. Usually just throw a couple zip ties around this big harness right here. That's gonna be okay. That thing doesn't need to be perfectly level or anything. A couple good zip ties, it's not gonna go anywhere. That's good. That's all good. I'll show you guys what exactly we had to do in the cab. It's pretty hard. It's practically impossible to film this part of it, but and actually be able to see our hands up in here. But you have to knock this white uh, pin out and then unplug the harness, clutch safety switch, and then the two 15s. One is right there, and one's up there, and then that thing will come out, and then uh, that's it. So clutch. Uh, Oh yeah, she feels really good. So it does have an adjustment on it if you'd like to adjust the clutch, but we're gonna leave it right there to start with. And uh, yeah, we're going to uh, get everything cleaned up, all of our tools picked up, and we'll be able to take this thing on a drive. All right guys, we're gonna take the truck for a drive. I uh, wanna verify that we can get through all the gears very easily. It does go into gear very easily already well. I think the clutch pedal's adjusted pretty good. So uh, yeah, we're gonna take this thing for a spin. Alright guys, so far so good in the truck. Give you guys a little run through the gears. guys that is going to wrap up the end of this video that's how you change the clutch in an mv5600 third gen dodge so without further ado leave us a like leave a comment down below if you guys enjoyed the video be sure to subscribe it's going to wrap it up see you guys on the next one